This is Just Ask George, exploring the universe of corporate finance and capital formation for your business enterprise, with merchant banker George Lovato Jr. and your host, David Wolf. Welcome back to Just Ask George. David Wolf here with the one and only George Lovato, the head dude of BH Capital. My wing dude. It's Friday again. We have some guests in the studio. One we main do. guest who's down here below the desk here. Some of our guests are human. Others TV are canine. <laughs> There's a 140-pound deer hound down here named Midas. Uh, who might pop up sometime during the show, but he's joining us in the studio today as our guest audience. And we enjoy <laughs> the element of surprise. Uh, and he may have a question. You live know. is live. You never know what he'll he, say. He may have a question. Today's subject matter, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, um, uh, the many reasons why DIY just doesn't work. Right there, it is. You just completed a fascinating blog uh, once again on the seismic shift, industry shift that we're experiencing uh, in banking. It, it, you know, we we uh, Paul had uh, one of our uh, financing partners come in yesterday, and we were having a conversation. He's a really smart guy. He's a Wall Street guy. Worked for Goldman. Worked for Morgan. He was a conduit guy. He's he's really really sharp guy. And we got into the you know how the industry's changed. And in that thinking, you know, the quiet 2.16 a.m. in the morning thoughts you're having and so on. And I, I really sort of put place the, the, the file in order in my mind as to how this industry's changed just in the last four years. <laughs> and uh, I'm, I'll start with a little background. Please. So we have 07 come along and, you know, we know the, the great crash of 08. 07, the, the market's beginning to fall apart. Yeah. Stocks are declining at record rates. There's really, you know, this free falls occurring. But then all of a sudden, at the bottom of the market, I think we were like at 6,900 or 6,700 or 6,970 or something like mm -hmm. that. And, uh, you know, the contrarians like me looked at that and said, it can't get any lower. Stocks were... Uh, below, far below book value. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. you know... I went in and bought companies like Ford at a buck sixty-seven and Bank of America at three dollars, and you know you go on, you go through the yeah. list of your own sort of S and P of what you bought. Mm -hmm. So a lot of traders and a lot of fund managers went in there and did the same thing, and all of a sudden, the market started coming back, <laughs> as all markets do, and you know there were there was record profits in the market in '09 and in 10 as the market began. And now we're at 15,000. So, I mean, you know, we've like more than doubled since then. And some of those stocks, like I use Ford as an example, you know, it, it, it there was no reason for Ford to be below two bucks. I mean, it just, there was no technical reason why it should have been there. But there was a lot of this panic and fear, and that's what happens in a down market. Well, there were literally trillions of dollars made in the marketplace. Okay, with the rebound mm -hmm. and hedge funds, managed funds, you know, uh, all these all these investment vehicles had realized profits never seen before, and now this capital is parked on the sideline. It's not. I mean, you know, they can see the market's going to continue to go up, but you know, after you made those kind of profits, you know, should I should I average up? You know, probably not. So. Mm -hmm. Now op banks offer an opportunity to the industry, and they just cease lending. They just say, you know, I, I'm tired of the regulatory BS I've got to go through, and every time I make yeah. a loan, you know, they're making me put these unreasonable reserves on it. Right. And so I'm making money on my ATM machine. I'm making, you know, I'm making twenty dollars a customer there per month. I'm, I'm making um, uh, money yeah. on uh, on deposits, you know, uh, and I'll take that money and. Guess what? I'll I'll put it out through these. I'll invest in these funds that are already out there in the marketplace. I'm going to lower my overhead, reduce right. my staff, take right. out my infrastructure. Absolutely. And so basically, I can just sit there. I'm reducing branches. I don't have a loan officer that has a loan limit anymore. Yeah. 
I'm shrinking. You're shrinking the infrastructure of, okay. the, of that business. And so those banks then put their money in those investment vehicles that are actually now becoming these specialized lenders. So that's essentially what happened. Hmm. And this guy was a classic case of capital parked on the sideline. Yeah. They all made a lot of money. They took that money. They said, this is where we're going to put it. And these are the these are the curbs on the street, here to here. That's it. We're not going to go any. We're not going to go to the sidewalk. We're not going to the driveway. We're staying between the curbs. Mm -hmm. Very defined, disciplined highly approach. defined, very disciplined credit process. They're they're really looking at more of the asset than, you know. We we were kind of okay. joking, you know. Okay. It's a, you know, banking is a relationship business, and that's just <laughs> such BS. I mean, the relate it's a relationship business as long as it's good, and then as soon as you start to falter a little bit, you know, they're making your life miserable, mm -hmm. and it's because they don't understand what you do or the asset that they financed really. Okay. So now you've got you've got this highly specialized lender, highly defined product, the geographically they may be limited. Okay. They may, there are certainly yeah. limitations in the qualification of where they're putting their money. Yeah. So there's going to be industry qualifications, there's going to be uh, size, you know, say 5 to 50 million. They're not going to do anything smaller than 5. They can't go above 50. Mhm. Mm uh, and they're 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 saying, okay, here's your budget, George. Here's twenty million a month, but this is the box. That's it. Yep. Okay. So that's the story of how this industry has formed, formed by the opportunity created by the banks of not lending, the capital parked on the sidelines, yes. the capital going to work, realizing that there's an opportunity out there in providing funds in these various areas, various yeah. industries, yeah. and various types of financing, and there it is. And I, and I know our, our director producer brought up the idea of peer-to-peer -peer lending. Peer-to-peer -peer lending does not have the capacity for that type of the trillions of dollars in capital. No, you're talking about a massive capital yeah. being redeployed into a market. Yeah. And it's a nifty idea like yeah. crowdfunding, but I, it's just... Yeah. We talked also about, just the, the, in, in your office, uh, before we rolled this today, uh, the matter of managing all these resources and partners. I mean, look at that face. <laughs> look at the put them. Um, and, and which kind of points back to the DIY factor in all of this. Uh, the business owner that may think they can do this themselves. This is not something you try at home. This is not being Carl Walenda, you know, and walking the wire across the Grand Canyon yeah, or wherever. That's amazing. Yeah. Or John Walenda, whatever his name is. Right. Um, without the net yeah it, it's uh, you know we've had we recently it, it, I was going back to uh, you know our underwriter Paul and he yeah you know we I said you know we need to kind of amalgamate you know our group and we've got to figure out what's hot what's not who's changed because mm -hmm. some of the lenders have actually changed the ones that we've been doing business with years ago there were um, a half a dozen to a dozen or uh, uh, resources and most of them were banks that came to us and said you know, break the ice for us. Here's fifty million. Here's a hundred million. Yeah, put it out there. There's ninety seven resources in my Rolodex, right? Of which their partners, their financing partners, their their participation resources, their the guys that were in yesterday saying, "Here's your budget. Go put it out." Mm -hmm. You know, the third, mm -hmm. the third, and the third thing mm -hmm. we talk about all the time. Yes, and guess what? Even that's gotten bigger in a short amount of time. Right. And it's gotten even more specialized. So where there were mostly banks 15 years ago, right, right. now we're down to like three. I wanted to get to that. Yeah, you yeah. mentioned there were three out of the 97 are actually banks where it used to be a, a much bigger piece of the pie. Right, right. Yeah. And and uh, you've got the, the other 94 guys, which are in, in their each little box. And, yeah. You know, cash flow lending, equipment lending, da 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 you know, those guys know their business very well. They know their product very mm -hmm. well. They know where it fits, and they know how not to essentially get hit in the back of the head with a skillet. They're investing know? in what they understand, aren't they? Yeah. And it's, and they're charging really a, a merchant banking firm like ours to match make, I would guess, to some extent, right? Is it match There's some of that. Well, but we, you know, to some extent, it's I'll say yes. Formation. But what it's really, we go back to the co idea of capital formation. Yeah. It's really trying to figure out what the guy really needs, 
how much he really needs and how much he can afford to need, <laughs> right. you know, right. and, and being able to sort of unwind that formula. Mm-hmm. All right. Mm-hmm. And case in point was uh, this whole subject matter, you know, about the, the paradigm shift in this new specialized industry. Right. Uh, there's a classic case of the DIY and mm. why you shouldn't do it. Right. Okay. Right. And this is a client recently who did it himself and went to a hard money lender Mm -hmm. when he really shouldn't have. I mean, there were other options available to him at that time if he knew what he was doing. Mm -hmm. Instead, he was convinced to go down this path with a hard money lender. And the deal was designed to be exactly where it is today. That's those guys know how to structure a transaction so that they don't get hurt. And And even when a deal does unwind, there's a way out for them. So he does this himself. He picks the wrong lender, the wrong structure, the wrong time frame, the wrong, you know, the wrong term, the wrong leverage, and he and the the the, the these onerous covenants in here in the in the document. And he does it. And with the expectation that he can go to the marketplace and get a more commercially reasonable deal. Okay. Uh-uh. Once a hard money deal, always a hard money deal. In other deal. words, once you're in, and you've mentioned this, it's very hard to exit. It's sort of like uh, what the attorneys generals are saying about payday loans. I mean, yeah. once you get in them, they, they're so hard to get out of. And so that's why there's, yeah. you know, all these laws that are preventing. So this hard, yeah. this, this yeah. deal, was he did it. He shouldn't have done it. And so he comes to us and says, now get me out. Well, his belief is... Yeah that, oh, I can go to a commercial bank now because I've stabilized my rents, which he really hasn't, and the commercial bank is going to loan me money. But the mechanics of that happening in today's environment, just like we talked about, exactly. they really don't have a reason to lend. Right. But now if they really want to own the privilege of owning this... Yeah, the bank, right. The bank yeah. uh, of if this particular loan. If the bank wants the privilege of owning that loan, they have requirements. That regulatorily, they're going to have to put a big reserve on this out front because this is a history or storied uh, asset that has been, it was first a discounted payoff, mm-hmm. then it went into hard money, it went into default again mm-hmm. the history after the it went into a discounted payoff. And, and so now, you know, you've got a thin borrower right. and right. you're sitting there and you're saying, well, gee, you know, how are the examiners going to review this? They're going to say you got to put a fifty percent reserve on this out front because because this is a storied asset and it it doesn't have stabilized rents yet, and this guy's got a history which appears to borrow expensively and strip away equity. So we offered him a deal which would have gotten him out of the hard money situation mm-hmm. that was costing him a boatload of money. Yeah. And it would have essentially stop the bleeding, but mm-hmm. he's of the belief that the local commercial bank is going to offer him a deal that he can't refuse. And I went and explained the mechanics of why that isn't going to work. Right. And I said, look, you know, I deal with this every day. I mean, I know this space, yes. you know. You understand how they think and why they do what they <laughs> and do. And why they have to, why they have yeah. to t- sometimes they do have, what they do. Yeah, exactly. And he came back and he said, I've got to, I've got to have hope that I can get a commercially, re- well, okay, hope's okay, but... And I, and I believe in hope, but by the same token, there is the reality that the bank isn't going to want to buy the privilege to finance his asset. Mm-hmm. So there's the case where the DIY is really the gold standard. <laughs> this DIY right. is the gold standard of why you shouldn't do it yourself. Right. This whole mechanics, this thing you're pointing out to, most people don't understand that obligate the, the bank having the privilege to own that paper what they are required to do in order to do that. Most people exactly. don't. They think it's about their getting approved. Yeah. Which is not yeah, the it's whole my story, credit, guys. You know? Yeah. <laughs> the, and, and we were talking a little bit about that yesterday in terms of, you know, banks, credit, 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 right. really not knowing the asset. And this is a case where the bank is going to really understand not only how much hair this deal has on it, yeah. but how many times it's been braided, you know? <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> Watch out for those hair jokes. Though. Yeah, yeah. I'm right. sorry. I that's got right. you again. That's you right. can do a fat joke now. So, no, 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 I uh, so you know, it, I I guess the conclusion of the show and the sort of the subject matter is yeah, yeah. is you 
it, it is a very complex landscape now. And even for us, because it's, it's changing in front of our eyes every day. Yep. yep. And there is an industry that has formed, which was born out of the opportunity of the banks not lending. Yeah which was born out of the fact that so much money was made during the recovery period, mm -hmm. you know, the market going back to, to 15,000 plus. Right. And so here we sit with guys that really know their business. They're smart, they're fast, you know, uh, but we still have to do what we do, which is like figure out a, what they really do need yeah, and really understand their business, their asset, and then be able to retrofit. And it, aside from, the deals we buy ourselves or the deals we participate in, those 97 guys know what they can do better than anybody else. And so sometimes it's, you called it matchmaking. I, I sort of calling it pairing. Yeah. You've really yeah. got to align the borrower first because it's a people deal mm -hmm. before it's a product, before it's a project deal. It's, a, it's, the, it's where that guy really is going to fit well. Yeah and where he's yeah. going to be able to flourish. Yeah. As a result, you know, here we sit uh, with a with an annual budget, and we're coming up on our famous date, October 15th, mm -hmm. and we're looking at 2014. You know, uh, the budget is going to grow a little bit more, but the idea now is this is so much more complex than it was 15 years ago. Wow. And the, and the formation of this new industry, I think, is really kind of cool. Yeah. But we, I can tell you're excited about When I walked in today, I could tell you were just very excited about what's happening. And this meeting yesterday and just this continual realization of how it's yeah, shifted. Yeah, how it's shifted. Yeah. How it's really shifted. So, I'm sorry, you were going to say something. No, no. I, I, I just was going to say that um, it's fun to watch. And some time ago, you and I did a show on how we thought this industry was going to evolve. When we first started Just Ask jo yeah, George, yeah. we did uh, Where Is the Money? Yeah. And uh, we started to talk about what is happening. Where and, and, and we started to hint at this highly specialized lending yep. and the fact that banks weren't, and, and it's here. But it's just much more robust today than it was even two and a half it's years robust, ago. It's robust, it's maturing, and it's, uh, and you can see, I mean, you understand why it occurred and why it continues to occur. Yeah. And uh, it, once again, the business owner seeking capital, there's no way they can master the business of their business and this, which is why we're here. It's, it's, it's why we do what we do why every we do. day. I mean, does it so well. <laughs> I learned something today. This was a learning day for me. And uh, another good I'm show. grateful to you for another good show and for sharing the, the and, love and the knowledge. And our guy, our, uh, Steve, our, our we, uh, we appreciate director, love producer, you as well. he gave us some good ideas today. And our Midas, audience member, your, Midas. Yeah, well. Midas, we appreciate your input on that, the restructuring of the industry. Thank you. <laughs> we'll see you next time on Just Ask George. It's www.bhcapitalltd.com. Don't forget those two L's together. That's right. Bye-bye. Right, Thanks a lot. For more information about George Lovato Jr. and BH Capital, visit bhcapitalltd.com. Check out more episodes of Just Ask George at justaskgeorgeradio.com. Just Ask George is produced by Steve Garth and is a production of BH Capital LTD. All rights reserved. <laughs>